Welcome to a chilly late November morning here in the Panhandle of Florida. We're going to be taking the Grady out today offshore. So I'm going to go ahead and get my rods and ice on board. So why don't you come join me and we'll see what we can catch on this cold chilly day. Man, I just pulled up. I was kind of getting my anchor ready and all these dolphins were just here all of a sudden they like to you know swim in front of your boat and i've got so much wind going on that the boat is moving at a decent clip so i guess they're ready for us to kind of start moving but we're already moving they're having just a good time here they're not feeding it looks like they're just looks like they're here just to ride in front of the boat that's pretty cool. All right, we made it out. As you can see, we've got a pretty decent amount of wind and, and waves out here, but hopefully it calms down a little later. But what I'm gonna target first is sometimes out on these reefs in the winter time, you can catch some white trout. And if you find them, you can you really load the box with them. So that's what I'm gonna kind of target first. And so I've got the standard um, chicken rig here, double drop type rig. This is um, 40 pound mono with three alt circle hooks with some um, you know dead frozen shrimp. And this is a black barrel swivel going up to 40 pound braid. And this is a Shimano um, Talus PX medium heavy rod. And this is a Pin Battle 5000. I mean, this is a six ounce bank sinker so i'm just going to drop this down and this shrimp is probably not going to stay on this hook very long because shrimp by nature doesn't stay on your hook very good but we'll see how it goes white trout will, uh, will grab squid too which is you know often easier to keep on your hook but they do love shrimp just like any trout all right, well, we got something on our first drop. Man, something with some decent pull to it. I don't think this is a white trout. White trout don't pull this hard. Unless maybe I got two of them, but this could be a trigger fish. Oh, oh man. Well, that was unexpected. A Tom Tate and a gag grouper. Wow. I'm not going to keep this Tom Tate. I, you know, you could use them for bait. This is often called ruby red lips but i'm not going to be target targeting big snapper or a grouper since both of those are out of season and that's what those are good for but this is a nice juvenile gag grouper and these aren't in season and obviously he's not big enough anyway but that was nice for a first drop to get two fish two different species on top of that all right buddy there he goes one thing about having to anchor in all this wind, you have to put out a lot more anchor rope. I've got probably about 300 feet out. And what that means when you're trying to be on your reef, you have, since you have so much more line out, you're swinging a lot more because there's so much line out. So I'm kind of getting close to the reef and then far away from the reef. Oh, here we go. And right now I was 17 feet from it. So, and you can see I got a bite. So man, another good man. Another good, decent pull to it. Wow. Red snapper. A red snapper loves shrimp too. It, really everything loves shrimp. It's just kind of hard to keep on that hook sometimes. And I thought it was a vermilion snapper at first. But that's a nice, smaller red snapper. Let's get him back. There he goes. We've been getting down to the 30s the past couple of nights, but our water temperature is showing 64 degrees, so that's good. Man, that was a bite right off the bat. Here we go. Oh, got him again. Another good, another good pull to him. What have we got this time? Looks like we finally got our trigger fish. There we go. Decent one. I don't think he's gonna be a keeper. These guys are in season. If we get one over 15 inches, 
we can keep him. Yeah, he was only about 13 inches. So let's get him back. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't get into the trigger fish because sometimes that's all you catch on some of these reefs. They'll grab it before anything else will. But every once in a while you'll get a keeper. Unfortunately, you can only keep one. But let's keep trying. Oh man. Wow, this has got some good weight to it. More than the others, that's for sure. Wow, all right. Imagine it's a good red snapper. Oh, did he get off? Oh man, I think he got off. Oh no, it just kind of gave up a little bit. Maybe something else was on it and it got off because it suddenly got a lot lighter. Maybe he had two and the other one got off. Now, unless we got a trigger fish, nice another 12 inch, 13 incher. Like I said, these guys are abundant out here. Let's get him back. Here's why I think I lost that fish. If you can see right here, my, my hook broke, tip of it broke. This is kind of light wire hooks. And I put those on there hoping for these white trout. But, you know, bigger fish sometimes will break these things. But here's how the good thing about a chicken rig is you can change these hooks so easily. So as you can see, I just unlooped that hook from underneath the hook and just pulled that one off. And to put the new one on, just kind of feed that tip of that loop through the eye and then just take the loop, run it over the back part of the hook over to the front side and just pull it. And that's how easy it is to change hooks. All right. Man, these fish got some pretty decent weight to them. I mean, I'm not pulling up monsters by any means, but, you know, just to catch on little pieces of shrimp here, it's not too bad. What have we got here? Another trigger. Another trigger. Man, hopefully we'd get a keeper in all these. These are some of the best eaten fish out here. And I guess over time, you know, they're so easy to catch and they got overfished. And so the regulations are pretty strict on them right now. Just being one per person. All right, let's get you back. I always think it's kind of funny how they do those fins in the back. Just kind of fan them when they're out of the water. And what I'm doing is basically, as soon as that hits the bottom, go ahead and close my bell and kind of be ready because they're going to strike really quickly. Oh, oh man. Man, this one just came up and snatched it. See how those triggers, they kind of make a circle? That's what they do all the way up. And they use that body that's so flat to their advantage by making those circles, you know, they're making themselves as heavy as possible. And that's why they feel so big. Oh man, another one. It is literally one fish every drop, except for that one where I had some strikes and had him for a few seconds twice, but he got off. Otherwise, I've got him all to the boat every single drop. All right, another trigger fish. I was kind of encouraged we were getting, we got that grouper and snapper and some other things early on. I was hoping. We were gonna avoid the uh, trigger after trigger thing, but it's turning into that, it seems. Oh man, here we go again. I think it's our trigger again. Oh man, man, these guys are fooling me to no end. It's a snapper, red snapper. All right, he's about 14 and a half. Let's go ahead and get him back. Perfect drop, there he goes. Here we go again. Guys, this is just crazy. I mean, this can kind of happen on these reefs like this, catching these smaller fish, but I am literally getting a fish every single drop. I don't think there's been but one or two times that I haven't gotten a fish. Here's another good snapper. Another good snapper. Oh 
Oh man. Just come up and just snatch it. It's not quite as big as the others. What have we got though? Oh, a little snapper. I just remembered about those dolphins. I heard a little splash over there. I guess it was kind of the white caps going on, but I forgot about those dolphins that we had right when we showed up at this reef. Man, fortunately, those guys are not hassling us. There we go. Ow! All right, let's get you back. Man, that guy tore my hands up. Those little snapper are really kind of hard, more hard to handle than those bigger ones and easier to get yourself poked with them just because they're flopping around and that kind of thing more than those bigger ones and trying to hang on to them to get them off the hook and back in the water before you know it they've poked you to death I ought to be using a fish grip but it's just easier and more natural just to grab them and get them back in quickly right, here we go oh man the triggers are getting smaller that's not good this is one of the smallest ones i've ever caught little guy there you go oh man here's one all right if this is a trigger fish i think we'll go ahead and make a move we've had a lot of fun on this reef but oh man it's a tom tate well same difference how about if it's a trigger fish or a tom tate we're leaving We've had a lot of fun on this reef, but let's go see if we can find different type of species to catch. What I do at the end of the day, obviously, but also when I'm changing spots like this, I just go ahead and take this weight off. It's so easy to put on and off. Just keep that in my cup holder or wherever. And that's just gonna keep that weight from slinging around as you're moving, hitting the rod, hitting any part of the boat, that kind of thing. Just makes for a, makes for a better, you know kind of care of your equipment all right we'll see you at the new reef all right so we're at our new reef and as you can see, our, our wind has kind of died down somewhat. It's not as rough as it was. That's kind of nice, but I'm gonna change up things a little different. I've got this bird of prey ounce circle jig, and I've just got this cigar minnow that I've cut in half, and I'm just gonna kind of run that through the eye and just kind of drop that down and see what's there. This is a 60 pound mono leader, a black barrel swivel, and this is 40 pound braid. And this is a pin battle 6,000 reel. And this is a Shimano Talus PX heavy spinning rod. So this is only an ounce. So it'll take a moment or two to get to the bottom. And that looks to be about a seven aught, eight aught size circle hook on the bottom. So it's really searching for something on the big side. If this is just trigger fish and those kind of things down there again, they're just gonna kinda eat that cigar minnow off and, and that'll be it, but we'll know fairly quickly. Pretty much if there's something big enough to grab that whole thing and grab that hook, he's gonna hook himself with that circle hook. Oh man, well, we got him. Got him on the circle hook jig. Now he doesn't feel like our big monster. I'm sitting here telling you I'm gonna have a great big fish did he get off oh man well we know the red snapper like it well it's not surprising a snapper got this but actually he didn't even get it in the mouth he got hooked underneath of it but snapper have big mouths you know so they can handle this size hook usually you don't use this big of a hook for this small of a fish but you know, that's what he caught. Now let's get him overboard. Man, I didn't want to tear up my hands anymore. What I like about it is, you know, the weight and the hook are all in one unit. 
So if you're using like a Carolina rig or even that chicken rig or, or some other types of things where the weight is separated from the hook, sometimes all that can spin when it goes down and you get it all tangled up before you even get it to the bottom. So that's, that's kind of a good thing. Probably a little bit bigger weight is probably what I need for this, you know, 60 foot or so depth that I'm at. Try this for a time or two and we'll put out that chicken rig again and see what we we get down here Oh, yeah, right off the bat again. Oh, man All right, this is our first chicken rig drop here at the second reef And we got something with some decent weight to it Let's see what it is Oh, man another grouper Boy, that's encouraging to get these grouper. Obviously they're too small and they're out of season. That's a decent sized gag grouper. He, he wouldn't be legal even if it was in season, but these are beautiful fish and great eating. That's a beautiful gag grouper right there. But let's get him back. And that was on a frozen shrimp about that big. Oh man, oh man. Oh, here's the biggest one of the day on this chicken rig. Wow. It's a little light rig. Hopefully, mostly these hooks are not that big and strong. I think this line will do it, but wow. All right, this is definitely, definitely the biggest one so far of the day. All right, we're getting some drag taken out. Mm. Man, I'm so glad those dolphin decided to just have fun for a minute or two on the bow of the boat and then go, because this fish would be toast. Oh man, is this a, look at this trigger fish, y'all. Holy cow, look at this trigger fish. Oh man, all right, we got our trigger fish for the day. Check him out. He is definitely going to be a keeper. Definitely going to be a keeper. Man. Well, let's get a measurement on this guy. Well, I'm glad I came to this second reef. All right, well, let's get a measurement. I know he's a keeper. Boy, he's 17 inches. Nice trigger fish, everybody. 17 inches. And he's going to go in the box. He's going to make a nice meal for me and my family tonight. Trigger fish, as I was saying earlier, have a very nice white meat with very little bloodline in it. So these are just delicious fish to keep. Unfortunately, we only get to keep one here. So he's going to be our one for the day. But let's go ahead and get him in a box. Oh, man. Here we go. Wow. I was literally just about to reel this in because I thought for sure my shrimp was gone since I hadn't gotten a kind of a nibble in several seconds, which is seems to be the criteria going on right now. What have we got here? Trigger fish? Oh man, it's a decent trigger fish. Well, let's get a measurement on this guy. All right, he would be a keeper. He's 16 inches, but unfortunately we, we can only keep one and we've got one in the box already. So let's get him vented and back in the water. All right. All right, I'm gonna go and head on in, get the boat cleaned up, get this trigger fish cleaned, and we'll see you in the kitchen for a delicious recipe. everybody we're gonna cook up that trigger fish and what we're actually gonna make is we're gonna make some crab cakes out of it obviously using the trigger fish in place of the crab meat now trigger fish like I was saying out on the boat is a very white flaky fish it's got a sweet flavor to it kind of like um, people have described it as kind of like grouper or even crab so that's kind of where I got this idea 
And the other reason is since we're only allowed to keep one trigger fish, you know, this is not a lot of fish to feed, you know, a, a larger family. Probably two people is about all it's going to feed. So that way you can make this fish go a little further by making crab cakes. So my first step, and it sounds really crazy, is I'm going to actually pre-cook this fish in the microwave because we want it cooked fully before we start to mix it in with our breadcrumbs and our other ingredients. So as you can see, I, when I rinsed the fish off, I didn't pat it dry because what we actually want is we want pretty wet fish. And I actually put a little bit of water in here, about a tablespoon of water in our dish. Because what we're going to do is when we put it in the microwave, we're going to put this lid on it. And we want that um, liquid in there to actually help steam the fish. All right, so we've got our fish done. It ended up taking three minutes and 30 seconds. So after about two minutes, I started just doing it in 30 second increments and checking it just so we didn't, you know, overcook it. So here we go, you know, we're starting to get some flaky fish. So we're done here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our fish in a bowl. Kind of let that cool down a minute or two. All right, so the rest of our ingredients, as you can see here, we're gonna be using some parsley. Now, I would prefer fresh parsley, but we couldn't get our hands on to any today, so we're gonna substitute some, some dried parsley, and it'll be just fine. And we've got the standard Old Bay, Dijon mustard, our panko breadcrumbs, Worcestershire, and mayonnaise, and some green onions and an egg. And I've just gone ahead and pre-measured all of our ingredients so that we can kind of quickly mix things together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start out with beating this egg a little bit because we wanna go ahead and have this um, egg fully beaten before we add any of our other ingredients. All right, so now that I've got that egg beaten, I'm going to just go ahead and add my ingredients. So this is a teaspoon of Worcestershire. We've got a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. This is a teaspoon of the dried parsley and a tablespoon of the green onions, finely chopped. And this is two tablespoons of the Old Bay. And this is a quarter cup of mayonnaise. We're just going to kind of mix that up. Actually, let's use a whisk to get that mayonnaise fully incorporated. So our next step is we're going to go ahead and get this um, fish flaked up. Now, you can do this in several ways. You can grab it with your fingers. I'm just going to kind of take these two forks and pull it apart. You don't want to finely shred this. I mean, you want chunks. I mean, imagine um, crab meat, you know, that, that size that you would get if you were using your crab meat. Okay, next up, we're gonna add a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Now, there's recipes out there that use, um, you know, actual breadcrumbs or saltine crackers or those kind of things. But um, a lot of times we have this panko on hand. In fact, we have a lot of these ingredients on hand as it is, so that just kind of makes things a little bit easier. All right, when you do this, you want to be careful with that fish that you don't, you know, shred it up too much more than you've done already. You just want to kind of get this incorporated a little bit. All right, so our last step here to get all our ingredients together is we're just going to kind of fold in this liquid. And like you did when you mixed the panko breadcrumbs and the fish, just kind of work it easy. You want to be real careful and delicate with this fish. All right, so our last step is we're going to cover this up and we're going to sit this in the refrigerator for maybe 30 minutes or an hour. And what that's going to do, that's going to kind of help all the liquid set in with those breadcrumbs. And so when you form it into patties, you know, it'll form nice and easily and evenly for you. All right, so it's been about 35 minutes or so, and you can see it's a little more firm than it was when we put it in. So at this point, you're just gonna make your patties out of these. About that size will do. I don't wanna get them too thick because we do need to cook the eggs in here. That's the only thing that's still raw in here. That fish, you know, is cooked, but we do need to make sure that we get that egg cooked and we wanna make it golden brown. All right, so I've got my patties made, 
And while I was doing that, I preheated this nonstick skillet with a little olive oil and butter in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these in there. And I've got that preheated to about a medium heat. And there you go, we're just gonna kinda of cook this on each side till it gets browned. All right, so it's been about five minutes and I just did a peek and they're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip them. Yeah, that's looking really good. All right, so I'm gonna kinda of let these go about three more minutes. I did turn up the heat a little bit to a true medium. I was a little under before. All right, so like I was thinking, that was about another three minutes. And I've peeked under the side and they look really good. So we're going to go ahead and get these off the heat. All right, everybody, perfectly golden brown fish cakes. So what you could serve these with, you could serve these with a tartar sauce or you could serve it with a remoulade sauce or really any sauce that you like. We prefer remoulade a lot. So I made a homemade uh, version here and I'll leave this down in the description so you can make this for yourself That's excellent y'all We got all of our ingredients I think balanced out right and the browning that we got on this was perfect and this remoulade sauce man This is just excellent for homemade. So I'll leave both of these Recipes down in the description below so you can make them for yourself If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead and do that. It helps me to continue to create these videos. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.